Hello, 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 brothers. Peace be upon you all. I pray you guys are doing well. Let's see. Man, it's been a while since I've made a video. At least I think about two weeks now. But today's video is about coming clean. Coming clean. Making confessions. Speaking out. You know. I think I have a confession to make. My name is Joshua. I'm a porn addict. Boy, saying stuff like that, coming out to people, sharing that part of our lives that's filled, is charged with so much shame, so much anxiety, guilt, regret, everything, the, the thing that we, we hope, we wish, we pray, no one finds out about us. The thing we don't even want to say to ourselves. We don't want to call ourselves addicted. No, 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 no. We hide our internet history, man. We hide our browser history. We delete everything. We hide all evidence. We don't want to be found out. This is the worst thing someone can know about me. The worst thing. I don't... I don't want to go there. I don't want to talk about that. Some of my... Um, <laughs> some of my friends have noticed, like, Hey, Joshua, what? You look kind of different, man. What's going on? We're... <laughs> I will say, you know, like, let's... So what's happened here? Like, you've, you've shaved. Yeah, I've, I've shaved, man. I've shaved, you know, like. I've. That was my consequence for slipping. For having a, um, having a slip on this journey that I have to shave. I have to come clean and tell, like, every time someone asks me, what's, what's going on? You've shaved. You don't have a beard anymore. You don't have a mustache. What's happened? I have to tell them, well, basically, you see, I'm, I'm in recovery from porn addiction, and, um, yeah, I, I had a slip, I, I looked at some, some material I, should, I shouldn't have looked at, and I, I clarify that, I tell them, well, I, no, I didn't look at pornography, like, I, I looked at some unsafe music videos, um, scenes in movies I shouldn't have watched and stuff, which, you know, it's against my plan, it's against my boundaries, and I have to come clean about this. I have to be honest and tell this this is what I did. Like, firstly, telling my, my accountability partner, you know, family members and friends that I've can opened up to. Tell them this is what I did. So it's, it's very, <laughs> this coming clean thing for me as it's become, it's very real, it's very open now. I haven't shaved in over two years. But yeah. Yeah, man. It's it's not easy. It's not easy at all coming clean, but it's something that really, really helps us on this journey because without without the people that I've spoken to, without my accountability partner, my family, my friends, I could easily be reporting a day zero right now. Not not a slip, not I've looked at some erotic, some some twerking videos and stuff. No, it's not, I, I, I could be coming back saying I've been binging for the past two weeks, you know? Because I have all these structures in place and people that are there checking on me, asking me questions, you know, worrying about my recovery, that there's, there's mental barriers like what, whatever you do, you cannot go back to zero because zero means a very different thing. And there's a lot, there's a lot of shame and there's a lot of guilt, you know. Especially if you open up to someone and then you have a slip or a relapse again, it's like ah, you, that's a new thing that you have to come clean about. You have to, that you have to mention. But part of it, you have to choose the right people. Okay. Not not everyone in your life needs to know about this. You you don't just. You don't tell everyone. There are certain people that if you tell them, you're going to feel worse afterwards. That isn't the goal. You're not supposed to feel worse after telling them. You're supposed to feel even the slightest sense of relief. Like this, this dragon that I've been carrying around on my back for so long. It's a little bit lighter. It's a little bit lighter. They're helping me carry the burden now. You know? The bar of you, part of you knows what kind of reaction someone is going to have after you tell them, you know? Like, 
let me let me see in, in my life I told what is it my mother my, my father they both know my my siblings know brother sister friends closest friends they all they all know and it's, it's not easy to get to that point. It's not easy having those conversations with people when you, there's so much shame. There's so much attached. To that. You don't want people to know this. You know, you don't want to talk about this. No, but it's it's so much, it's, it's, it's a lot easier because the hardest thing is going through on this journey alone with no one, no one knowing. No one in your life having any idea and not, not being able to help you. As human beings, we're social creatures, you know. We, we thrive off other people. We work together. We work in teams. We get by on other people's support. Doing this alone is so hard. If all you are is just an anonymous name and no profile image on the internet, it's, it's very hard. Very hard. And it's, you have to choose those right people. The family, friends, your upper half, a significant upper, wife, girlfriend, your partner, like, consider how you're going to have that conversation with them, you know. Part of that, like, you're going to, you're going to need to be honest. You're going to need to be honest. You can't. Hide. You can't sugarcoat things. You can't tell them, "Oh, I had this. I had a problem, but it's all it's all done now. That was years ago." It doesn't help you because if you're there and you're slipping and you're relapsing, but everyone thinks you're fine, it's creating more shame and regret. Especially if someone comes to you and they're like, "Ooh, isn't it your anniversary? Aren't you, or aren't you? You know, you're you you've just made six months now. How are you feeling?" It's like, "Ah, no, I relapsed last week." Because they don't know where you are. Like me, I had told I had told some friends long ago that, oh yeah, you know, this is what I struggle with and I'm done now. So they thought I had like six, seven years <laughs> of recovery. They they were using me as an example, like, oh Joshua, you know, he he overcame pornography. He's he's fine with, you know, not knowing that I relapsed a few days ago. But because they're not being honest, it's not helpful to people. We have to be honest with ourselves, with other people, the people that we're sharing with. This is what I struggle with. This is how I struggle. And this, I, I need help. I need help to get through this. You know? And they're going to ask you some, some questions that you don't want to answer. You know? So you have to choose. You, you have to take control. It's your recovery. So you say, I, I don't feel comfortable answering that. And guess what? They're, they're not going to dig into it. I mean, they're they're there. People are a lot more understanding than you think they are. Now, there, there's some there's some families where I'm, I, I wouldn't advise you go and, and share this. Some some families they will disown you. You know, I mean, goodness, there was this um this guy in India who um he, he cut off his his son's hand when he found out he found his browser history or something like that. That kind of dad, that's not the kind that you open up to and tell him, Daddy, yeah, I have a porn problem. No, and so. That's why you need to choose the right people. You'll you'll know. You'll be able to tell her, yeah, this this thing I, I do not want to say this, but that person, if I did tell them, they're not going to blow up in my face, they're not they're not gonna beat me up or something. Yeah, no, I think their reaction would be loving and caring. You know? And there's there's gonna be some questions like what? What ex what do you mean? Okay, porn addiction, what do you mean? What what what, what does that entail? How often do you do it? What do you look at and stuff? So you you have to choose your boundaries and how much you want to share. And as long as all everything that you are sharing is honest, but you just you say I'm, I'm going to draw the line here. I don't. I really don't want to get into the details. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of all the the sick. The, I, I don't want to share any porn fetishes or something. No, I, I, that's not what I'm here for. But please help me with this problem. Yeah, the shame is going to actually decrease. It's the weirdest thing because the that that this that we we want to hide from people so so much we don't want to share it with anyone. We don't want anyone to know. When we do tell someone, 
we don't get that that reaction most of the time you know when you when you speak to the right people you don't get that reaction like this some being that climbed out of the sewer or something some absolute pervert pedophile whatever sick business you're you're into i don't want any part of you in my life anymore no it's like oh i'm really sorry to hear that you struggle with this man i'm so sorry to hear that you know it's hard and then they start simply they start saying yeah no, pornography is everywhere nowadays yeah that's i can see why that would be a problem with you you know some some of the people you open up to might say yeah i i struggle with that too it happens it's happened for me you know some of my friends i've spoken have spoken up it's like yeah no i, I want to quit this too man i'm with you i'm with you you know then then you've got a new accountability partner if you've told family members you've told your wife your girlfriend now People are there in your corner. They're fighting for you. They're supporting you. You realize that you're still loved. You're still loved. People don't. They, 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 they don't. They don't. They're not grossed out by you or anything. They don't hate you now suddenly because they they found out this part of you. When you when you go about that conversation in the right way, you you tell them that it's it's difficult. It's a different story when you're trying to tell a wife or a girlfriend because. That, that's hurtful and a lot of the times you know they feel angry and betrayed you know so that one I, I would advise that you you take you you take some real consideration into making that conversation you know you go online you see what therapists and stuff advise before making that transition because it's, it's not an easy conversation to have with them because they feel like how am i supposed to compete with millions of of women online what, what do i do with that do you, are you even attracted to me that's that's a difficult place to be you know but when it comes back to it like the shame it, it decreases when we share with other people you're still loved people still care about you you know and everyone can relate to struggling everyone struggles with something okay yeah someone else's struggle isn't pornography maybe it's drinking maybe it's smoking Maybe, maybe there maybe it's drugs. You don't need so people struggle with other things, you know. And the pornography struggle is very, very widespread. Far, far, far too many people can relate to our struggle more than you think. You know? Like <laughs> like um forget who what was it? Was it I can't remember. There was there was one comedian. And he was talking about how, like, this is this is a billion dollar industry that has no audience because no one is admitting that they watch this stuff. No one is admitting it. No one is owning up, you know. No one wants to say, I, I watch it, but obviously they're making money. So people, <laughs> they're definitely getting views. But when you share with other people, right, the journey, it gets easier. You're not carrying this burden alone. You have, and you have to maintain that honesty throughout because people are going to start asking you. They're going to start asking you questions. They're going to start offering to help you. Oh, how's it like? It's been two weeks since we talked, man. How are you doing? How, how are things? And then you know you're you're honest again. Oh, I'm I'm struggling. Uh, yeah, I, I fell down three days ago or something. Like, oh, can I help you with that? Is can I, can I help you lock your devices? I will hold on to the passport. You know, things like that. Conversations like that can be had now. If you have higher accountability. You know, that there's people you can count on. You know, this, this is far too hard to do this alone, okay? I was alone for many years. Now, like, I, I can still, I thank God that I'm coming up on day... 250 and that's that's tomorrow wow jeez and like my streak right now it feels gross it feels icky all, all these slips and why am i searching for twerking videos what am i doing why am i why am i look i i, I made a video before about Nicki Minaj. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna say anything else i don't want to trigger people but i made a video before about Nicki Minaj. why am i watching <laughs> I don't listen to her music. Why am I watching her music video? There's no good reason. No. But no, in all of this, there's still no pornography. 
no masturbation, no orgasm, no, none of the PMO, just moving too close towards PMO, but we're on this journey, and we're still working on a recovery, you know, doesn't end here, we gotta overcome the slips too, we gotta overcome these pornography substitutes and these near these going towards the wrong direction we're trying to go up we're trying to go towards recovery and that journey gets a lot easier when you have other people in your life helping you that's what i'm going to share with you guys today brothers we can all do this we can all break free of this we can break free of it all we can leave it behind this deep sense of shame and frustration the regret all of it we can get past this can all do this, Robert. Peace.